So in this video, I wanted to explore a little bit of the differences between NURBS modeling and polygon modeling. Um, so to do that, we're going to do two different bottle models um, and talk a little bit about the differences of how models are created. So first, let's kind of look at the differences between a NURBS object and a polygon object. So I'm going to create a polygon sphere. Um, and under the polygon sphere, I'm just going to go ahead and reduce the number of subdivisions a little bit so we can see the difference, or we can see um, the, the sub-object elements that make up this, this object. And then under curves and surfaces, I'm going to make a NURB sphere. So on the surface, I mean, when this one was completely smooth, they look very similar, right? two very similar looking spheres. Um, but we can see that they're made up out of different types of sub-objects. So if I go to the polygon sphere, I'm going to reduce this down to like 7 and 7. We'll see that a polygon object is, you can right click, and it's made up of vert vertices, edges, and faces. Right? So vertex is any individual point, right? and I can manipulate that. Right? And I can also manipulate any edge, which is a line connecting any two vertices. And a face is any enclosed area of edges. So, and so I can, I can manipulate all of these in order to get a different looking model. Now at any point I can smooth this model. This is the base of what this model looks like, but I can hit 3 to smooth it. Or I can hit 1 to unsmooth it. Or I could do mesh smooth. And that's going to subdivide the model into more faces so we have a smoother mesh. Right? But the thing that is important to recognize is that in a polygon model, an edge can never be anything but a perfectly straight line. That can never be a curve. Okay? So <clears throat> you'll, you'll notice that when I hit 3, it shows it as curved. But really, this is just a, a smooth preview of the model. This is a preview of what the model would look like smoothed. The actual model looks like this. Right? So this is important to know, and um, th the cool thing about polygon models is they're very quick to, man to manipulate. We can do a lot of um, stuff like extruding, and I can you know, bring this face out. I can add a bunch of divisions. I can do some offsets. So there's a lot of things I can do very quickly to change this form dramatically. Okay. Um, okay. Now, a NURBS object is a little bit different. So NURBS, actually, let me show you the word here so you can see, N-U-R-B-S. NURBS stands for Non-Uniform Rational B Splines, or Bezier Splines. And so um, we can see that NURBS are actually made up out of a bunch of these curved lines. Um, if I right click on it, you'll see that it's also got some sub objects. It's got um, some control vertices and isoparms, surface points. Um, and you can see that I can you know, sort of click on that. And if I wanted to insert an additional knot in there, I could. Um, control vertices are different. These are like vertices that are floating above the model. And you'll see that if I grab one and manipulate it, I'm, I'm sort of manipulating this this point that is like the model is trying to get to, right? It's like this overall influence of it. Right? Now, this is the the benefit of NURBS initially is there's very little data in here, right? I mean, we could count the number of control vertices here, like there's not a there's not a ton, right? Um, but we're still able to get a very smooth rounded object. Um, this was significant when a when computers were much slower, right? When um, a computer couldn't calculate millions of faces um, without completely crashing, right? Um, so NURBS, instead of a line being perfectly straight, the lines can be curved. It can have a, a tangent to that. Um, and so instead of saying draw a straight line from point A to point B, it's saying draw a line from point A to point B that changes at a specific angle over time. And so this is, or over a distance. And so this is, um, this is a little bit more math going on in here, but fewer points to calculate. And so overall, we could get more organic shapes 
without being as taxing on the computer. So <clears throat> that's why NURBS were significant. Well, computers kind of outgrew that. Computers got really, really, really fast, really quick, and so now can handle millions of faces without crashing. Um, there's still reasons to use NURBS, though, and one is the its ability to um, quickly. You're gonna have to. It's gonna be a while. Uh, so one is to um, quickly calculate. Um, uh, I'm sorry, quickly um, recreate specific shapes um, that are like precise. So if we if we need very precise models, um, I can draw like to an exact blueprint something, and and loft some relatively you know precise surfaces. Um, polygons are a little bit more aesthetic. You you kind of use your eyeball to to get. Um, the shape that you're wanting, and they're usually used a little bit more for um, for entertainment purposes. So let's go ahead and um, delete those. And so what we're actually going to do is we're going to spend a few minutes um, modeling two different objects. I want to show you quickly though how a NURBS object is created out of curves. So we can create curves. I can I can draw a curve, right? draw a couple of different curves, right? Um, you can draw three right? and move these up near each other, right? something like this, and select all three of these. And I can loft those together. And you'll see that I'm sort of generating an overall NURBS surface um, that was made up out of these three curves. And so if I make any changes to those curves, it's going to change that surface and we can get something a little you know kind of quickly we got something that has a lot of information to it right um and that's one of the benefits of that um so let's go ahead and delete all of that um so let's make we're going to model two bottles so i'm going to show you quickly the the bottles that we're going to be aiming at the first one this is where i'm going to model in polygon it is a, um, like a, a hair conditioner um, bottle, silk hair therapy. Um, and so as you'll see as we click through, let's go back, as we click through some of these shapes, you'll see it's kind of square. Um, it's got a little bit of a rounded shape, but for the most part it's very boxy, right? And so we're going to go ahead and bring this model, or this, this picture in as a reference for us to model to. So um, in my front view, I'm going to, um, and I have to do this in my front view, not my perspective. In my front view, I'm going to click this little button up here. It's the fifth button in our viewport menu. Um, and it looks like a, like a grid with a blue plane on it. Right? So this is our image plane button. When I click this, it's going to immediately ask me, you know, where do I want to, where do I want to get my image plane? Um, so I, I haven't really created a project yet. Let me, let me go ahead and do this first. So file, I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna go to project window, um, and I'm gonna create a project on my desktop. Um, new, go ahead and put this on my desktop. We'll call this temp bot. Here we go, select. I'll call this bottle. Hit, hit, I'll hit accept, and you'll see that there's my temp bottle. And I'm going to go ahead and dump all of these images into my source images folder. Just because, and I you can always always create a. Uh, Actually, probably the easier way of doing this is just dragging the bottle folder in there. And so now I got that entire bottles folder inside of my source images. The reason I do that is because um, when I went to click on this little blue image, it wants to take me to the source images of my project. So I had to create a project first. And when it takes me there, there's my bottles folder. And I can point at the one I'm going to use for my polygon bottle, the silk therapy. Okay. Well, now that I have this and I have my grid, I can see my grid is um, 
So we've got the zero, zero axis here. And you, you can see I can move this around just as if it were any other plane. But it's a little different. If I go to perspective view, you can also see it here. Right? Um, it's a little different than any other plane. Let's go ahead and create a polygon sphere just to show you this. Right? And I can scale this up. Right? Um, the reason it's different than any other plane is um, if I hit 4, I'm going to go to wireframe, but this image is still going to be visible. Right? So this is an image plane, um, and that image will stay on there no matter what um, what my viewport setting is. So that's really handy to have in there. Now you'll notice that right now, though, it's right in the center of everything, kind of getting in the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and move that back a little bit. And, um, and then in my front view, I'm going to position it so it's relatively right in the center of my image plane. So I'm going to try to straighten it up and uh, you can see my my x or my y axis going up there. I'm going to try to line that up in the center of all the words. I feel like that needs to rotate just a touch more. Again, I'm I mean we could get very precise with this, but I'm not being um, super precise. I'm just trying to get this lined up pretty well. Um, the grid is pretty helpful there in that it shows I'm really close to it on both sides there. If I go up here, maybe it needs to go rotate just a touch more. Something like that. There we go. So again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Um, as long as we can get the profile of this pretty well, I think we're all right. Okay, so I have that in there. Um, at this point now, if I wanted to turn off my grid, I could. Um, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm, one, I'm going to um, go ahead and leave it on. Well, no, I, I can turn it off. Um, so what I'm wanting to do now is to start blocking out this shape. So from all of those images that we were looking at in our source images folder, that's not the right one. Um, from our source images folder, all these bottle images, we'll, we'll see that overall this object is kind of boxy shaped, right? And so that's really what we're, we're starting with is to try to figure out what primitive object to start with. Now we could start with any of them, all we're really needing is some mesh, um, but for me this is you know predominantly a box that's sort of pinched in on the sides, that's it, that's for the next model, and sort of bulging out in the front and sides as well. And so I'm going to use these as sort of reference to to get that size sized up. But I'm going to start my overall shape with just a box. So I'm going to go ahead and click a box here, and I'm going to go ahead and start scaling this um, to to be the right size. So at any point, I can hit four. Sort of scale this thing up. Probably going to make that a little taller. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, that's all right from the front view. From the top view, though, you're seeing that that's a really thick bottle. Right? This is a so we actually need the bottle to be thinner. And although we could load in some more image planes, we could load it in from the top. I'm just going to use sort of this image and this image to sort of get it to about the thickness of um, the narrowest point in here of the sides. And so for me that's a little bit thinner than that, probably something like that. Right. And again, I could I could put an image plane on the bottom if I really wanted to get that in there perfect. So now that we have that, um, we start needing these corners to pinch in and to start getting sort of this overall profile shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert, because I can't bend this line, I'm going to insert a new edge loop in here. So we're going to do that with Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, and I can pretty much just click and drag, and when I get to there, that's a good point that I can sort of scale inward. Now, I'm just going to hit the R key to scale, and I want to warn you on something here. If I grab from the center and scale, 
Like that looks like it's doing the right thing. If I go to my perspective view, you'll also see that it pinched it in on the sides. See, it pinched it in the, the belly too, right? And really, I want that part to stay pretty much straight. So when I scale this, I want to just scale in the side to side axis. Right? So I get something like that, and that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to, if I hit the G key, that will repeat my previous tool, which is also there. So that brings back up my insert edge loop tool, and I can just go through here and start scaling to get the form of this model. Right? Um, now, we've talked in the past, or I, I've talked in previous classes, if you're not, if you're just watching this online, um, I have talked in classes about um, being able to select a full edge loop. Right? So I'm back out in the perspective view. Um, if I'm, I'm in edge mode, right, um, and I click there, I'm selecting a single edge, right? But if I wanted to select that entire edge loop, I could just double click it and it'll select that entire edge loop. That doesn't really work. Like It works really well right here because if I double click this line, when it gets to this corner, it knows it's not going to go up and down. It's going to continue along this, this edge flow around the model. Well, if I double click here, the hope would be is that it would select this entire edge loop here, but it's not doing that. And the reason for that is because when it gets to here, it doesn't know if I want to select this edge loop and this edge loop. Is that the side it wanted me to select, or did I want it, did I want it to select all of this? Right, so it doesn't necessarily know what I want. So we have to be kind of creative about how we select our objects. So in the front view here, um, instead of trying to select that edge loop, I could actually just select the vertices. Right? I could go and select all of those vertices, and, and selecting all those vertices is really the same as selecting all of those edges. Right? And at that point, I could again sort of scale inward to the center. I'm just going to kind of touch the top corner there and we, we're going to realign some of these things later anyway. So I'm just kind of getting this in here to get my overall shape. Again I'm going to kind of go for that that corner there because um, we're getting a little bit of perspective for that bow in there. Okay so this is a good start. Um, something you'll notice so if I go back to my perspective view and at five, my object mode. So this is very boxy. It's sort of the right shape, but it's we're still kind of getting a um, um, too too sharp on the edges, right? This is kind of rounded. And so again, I want to remind you: one is going to be this unsmoothed, and then three is going to round it. And you're going to see we're losing a lot of information in there when we round it. So I'm going to go back to one because I'm still also missing some information from the top. So remember when we looked at our top of our bottle, we were seeing that it kind of bulges out in the front, bulges out on the sides just a little bit. So we're going to add that in with some extra edge loops. Okay. So from the top view, I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, sorry, Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop. I'm going to click and kind of drag that to the, the center as close as I can. And then I can sort of scale that outward. Um, I'm going to hit G because I want a little bit of a bulge on this side. Because I'm going to hit G and I'm going to put another edge loop in here and kind of scale that in the x axis a little bit. And so just by doing that, we're getting a little bit closer to that shape we were wanting. Right? So if I go back to my perspective view now and hit 3. That's looking a little bit better, right? A uh, couple of things I'm noticing. I'm getting a little too much rounding in the bottom there. And we also need this to kind of bulge up at the top here. Um, and so I'm, I'll spend a little bit of time addressing those things. I also feel like the bottle actually does a little bit more like that. Um, but the other thing I'm noticing is that this edge here, like where we go to the very edge here, if we look at our, our picture from above, it's a little sharper than that, right? That's a quicker curve on that side. Um, so, um, give me, let's see. So, so let's go ahead and finish this up and I'll kind of show you the, the last little bit here. 
Um, so a couple things we can do to increase the sharpness of this edge on the... I don't know what that is. Uh, to increase the, some, the sharpness of this edge at the bottom, I can just insert another edge loop. So Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop Tool, and insert that, insert that close to the bottom, and you'll see that that kind of sharpens that up. Right? Again, if I go to the front view of this, um, go ahead and go back to one. When it's smoothed, it's not adhering to my, my bottle shape quite as well. So I'm going to do a little bit of work in just making sure that this all kind of lines up the way I would want it to. Rescale that in a little bit. And my two cents here, I feel like I need another edge in a few spots here. Get that to there. Let's go ahead and do insert another edge loop here maybe and maybe here. Yeah, that'll work for right now. Go ahead and scale those in a little bit. That'll allow me to scale these in a little bit. There we go. So that's much closer to the shape of the bottle that we were that we were going for. Right? Um, now I go back out to my perspective view here. Hit five, and the last thing is like again, this is a little too soft on this side. I want that to happen a little sharper. So let's look at the top view. The way that this corner is rounded is about the distance from this edge here to this edge here like how that how that rounds there is really about how far apart those edges are right? so if i move this closer to that side you'll see that that corner gets rounder but since i'm closer to this edge that corner gets sharper right? so we can push this stuff around and drastically change how this edge smooths right so really to make that sharper we just need edges closer to it. So a couple of ways we could do that, I could try inserting another edge loop. Right, so mesh tools, insert edge loop, put one closer to this side. Right there, and you see it's going to sharpen that edge up a little bit. Right. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Um, the other way we could do this, and this is one we're going to try here, is I can select Let's go ahead and go back to W here, so you can, or go back to one, so you can kind of see what I've done. I can select an edge, right, and I can bevel it. So if I go to Mesh Tool or Edit Mesh Bevel, what that's going to do is it's going to take a sharp edge and it's going to flatten it out by duplicating that edge and, and creating a, a a flat surface there. So you see how we get that, and you can see that it's really just that one edge is split into two edges. We can also add additional segments here to round that off a little bit if we wanted to. So that's really nice, but there's a problem. If we look up here at the top, this face here, right? Um, a modeling standard is that you rarely want any polygons, actually you, you hardly ever want any polygons that are more than four-sided. So you you'll a triangle is okay every now and then, a four-sided polygon is called a quad, and that's perfectly fine. But a five-sided polygon is called an n-gon. Actually, any polygon higher than four is called an n-gon. And that's that's bad. And the reason for that is because if I were to smooth this now, if I hit three to smooth it, you'll start seeing we're getting this weird pinching. Like Maya doesn't really know how to figure out this this face. Right? This is confused. It's confused with about this. So I'm going to undo that and show you a way that we can still get that bevel. We just have to think creatively about what we bevel. So instead of just beveling that one edge, I can then bevel this entire edge loop that goes around here. Right? In fact, I can do that to both the front and the back. And now it's not. Now it's going to make a full loop around there, and it's not going to 
truncate into any weird corners. So if I just bevel that, see now everything is still quads. Right? And if I were to smooth that, you'll see that, that gives me a nice sharp edge on the top of that bottle. Now the last thing that's kind of difficult about this is that my top of my bottle has a little bit of a, it has a cylindrical cap and it sort of starts working toward a cylinder. So this is where sometimes you just have to use brute force. So I'm going to grab these top faces here and I'm going to say edit mesh extrude. And it's going to extrude out some extra faces here and I'm just going to start scaling those in and start trying to make a very clear um, cylindrical shape here, right? So scale it in that way. Um, if I go to one, you'll be able to see that shape a little bit better and see that if I did something like that, that's a little bit more of a cylinder now, right? And so I can extrude those faces again, edit mesh, extrude, move it up just a little bit, G to do it again, maybe G to sort of round that off and sort of scale that in a little bit. And now if I hit three, hopefully we have a little bit more of a rounded shape on the top of that. Now I didn't do a very good job at lining that up with my background image, so I will spend a few more minutes sort of getting that into place. Right? So I lower that. Probably overall I would scale this up. Actually no. Overall I'll scale all of this up just a little bit. Make it a little flatter. Let's look at what that looks like in perspective. Actually, yeah, that's looking pretty good. There we go. So there we have it. And now we can put our cap on top of that as a separate object because it, it actually is a separate object. Um, I may also want to do just a last minute cleanup. I would maybe consider pulling this edge down just a touch to round that. So there we go. That's feeling pretty good to me. Um, and of course, we would just sort of put our, you know, start working on making our lid as a separate piece. Now, that's pretty cool. Um, we're able to do that all with um, polygons, and polygons are sort of what I default to. Um, but I want to show you in the same scene, um, I want to go ahead and put all this stuff in a layer and hide it. Um, I want to show you in the next video how to make another bottle with NURBS. Now, eventually, I'm going to convert that to polygons anyway, but NURBS has some really nice tools to allow us to generate really symmetrical objects easily. So um, I'll pick this up in the next video.